Hello, my friends. Brian King here. I want to be very firm with you for a little bit because I see this way too much, not only with you know, potential clients, but clients that I work with kind of at the beginning of our relationship. And what I want to emphasize is that you've got to stop playing small as a parent. What do I mean by that? I mean, quit being, what's the, the best word to describe this or the best phrase? Quit being so habit-driven, task-driven, unconscious, getting caught up in the task list. Because one thing that I see far too often is parents who get into this habit, especially when you have kids with special needs, because things can be very unpredictable. Hey there, Sarah. Things can seem, you know, out of the blue, too random, too impulsive. And what you do is you end up getting caught up in the stop it form of parenting, especially when you have a kid with ADHD. You spend a lot of time trying to get them to stop touching this or stop touching that or stop, you know, touching themselves or, or whatever the issue is. And when you get them to stop it, you begin using that as your measure of success. I see that far too often with a lot of kids that present with a lot of behavior when the reality is, is they have skill gaps. There are things they need to learn. And there are a lot of parents that don't go beyond stop it. You know, stop fussing with your clothes or, you know, stop being so distracted or, you know, stop dawdling around. You have homework to do. And as soon as you get them to stop it, you think you're being successful. So what happens? You have kids that progressively go through life being afraid to do anything. They don't want to take any risks. They don't want to be criticized, so they don't do anything. And because they've stopped the behavior, you think you're being successful. That is very, very sad. Because what you must understand is that in order for us to be playing big as a parent, and this is what I teach, is you've got to be committed to growing a child into somebody that can bring all of themselves to the world. Not just what's appropriate, you know, not just what's going to allow you to fit in or seem normal. We're talking a complete human being, emotionally intelligent, good decision maker, someone who can regulate their own emotions, someone who knows how to be socially effective. Some of you may think that this is a tall order. I don't care. Because I don't settle when it comes to how I'm going to raise my kids. I want them to be able to go out there and do whatever they damn well want to do and achieve. I want them to be able to use their full potential. So if you want to play big as a parent, that's what you got to do. Instead of just falling back and thinking, oh, well, I put out today's fires. Oh, I completed the to-do list. I took my kid here and there and all the other dozen things they do to distract them from their anxiety, to get their energy out. Don't really teach them any life skills, but man, do I keep them busy. I see that a lot too. Kids that are really awesome in something, they're overscheduled and their social life sucks. Why? Because you're not teaching them that stuff. They're not being well-rounded. You're not raising a full human being. You're picking and choosing and saying, well, we're going to emphasize this because this child enjoys it, or we're going to emphasize that because the kid's really good at it, or we're going to do this because you're supposed to, because Sally, the neighbor down the street, did this for their kid, so I'm going to do this too. And you put all your energy in that, and a lot of other stuff atrophies. It suffers because your mind is not focused on raising a fully functioning, well-rounded human being. And guess where you facilitate that growth the most? Right here. How you interact with that child. It isn't about the social skills groups. It isn't about the books. It isn't about the IEP. It's right here. If you learn how to master all of those skills, you become the foremost model not only for how to do it, but how to generalize it. How do they take these skills beyond you so they can kick butt out there and be as effective as they want in any circumstances? There was a time when I was told I had Asperger's. I still have the raging ADHD. I have the dyslexia. But there are people that I've met over the years, and this is not bragging. This is just what's possible, okay? 
there are people that look to me as the model for how, how to effectively communicate with other people. Now, I don't know what you think about the way I present my ideas, about the way I do my videos, but the way I'm able to communicate now is heads and tails above. It is exponentially better than what I was doing 20, 30 years ago. I was awful at communications. I was truthful at the expense of connection. I would rather put the facts out there and have my opinion be as blunt as possible and not care about the other person. And that left me alone. Because I could hide behind the diagnosis and demand other people accept me just the way I am. But the reality is there are particular ways to connect with human beings if you want to be effective. And you cannot expect them to be a punching bag for you because you've decided you're going to be blunt and do nothing to improve upon that skill. I see a lot of people with challenges like mine bang the drum of that and it's bullshit, okay? I'm <laughs> just being honest with you. If you want to stay stuck in your default skill set, fine. You're going to have a hard time for the rest of your life. But if you genuinely want to be socially effective, you have got to consider what's going to work for you and the other person, not just what's going to work for you. The world is reciprocal. It will not tolerate that. There are some saints that are going to just sit there and take it. And that's fine if you can find them. But if you want to be effective in the workplace, you want to be effective in your community, you've got to learn how to be reciprocal. That is something that I spent so much time researching, practicing, screwing it up before I've achieved such a level right now that I can walk into any room and connect with people within seconds. And I have Asperger's, supposedly. I have trouble focusing. But I know how to interact with people where they feel like they're the most important person in the room. I learned this stuff, folks. Okay? I didn't just wake up one day and pop out of my mother's womb and say, Oh, look at all these lovely people. Who's pouring the tea? That's not how it worked. I busted my butt. I thought big. I thought about playing bigger. I didn't just want to get better socially, I wanted to be a master of it. Because I knew my kids needed to succeed and they were not going to if they saw me being a slacker, making excuses, justifying, hiding behind the label, the diagnosis. And our kids with Asperger's and ADHD, they are going to have to compete in a world that is moving fast, that is based on innovation. And who knows what this new administration is going to do, how it's going to perceive people with special needs. But regardless of who's in the White House, there are people out there that simply don't get it because it was not in their radar as they went through their life. You're not going to be able to walk up to that person and expect them to be all about social inclusion, about a fully integrated society, they're going to know what they know from their own life history. That's it. So you have got to come to the table prepared to connect with that person. And if it, the disability conversation comes up and they want to be educated, you know, there are some people out there that are always walking around looking for opportunities to advocate, to slay the ignorant out there that are oppressing the people in the disabled community. I know very few people that are out there genuinely looking to screw us over. I see people out there that are ignorant because they didn't know any better. They had no need to understand the disability community. But now that they know you, if they're curious and they want to be educated, you can educate them. But you have got to be prepared to meet them where they are. That's what it means to think bigger. As parents, we need to understand our kids need to be able to play big or they're going to get stepped on. I know for a lot of parents, thinking this way is new. It's a little radical. It sounds a little risky. So what? As our legacy is how well our kids can work out there in the world.
Now, I'm not saying that every kid is going to be able to play at that level, but you don't know until you challenge your kid to keep growing. When my oldest was younger, he had meltdowns at the slightest frustration. He would try and kick holes in the wall. He would destroy his room. He would turn over chairs in the classroom. He'd have panic attacks and run to the hall. One time he actually made it out of the building and they sent him home because he was a safety risk. Zero frustration tolerance. So anal about change that if his teacher varied the schedule in one little way, he would melt on in class. Now this is a boy who went to prom, who does his own chores, who has a job, who goes to college. He's polite. He's flexible. He's incredibly helpful. And it didn't just happen because, ooh, he grew out of it. This happened because I set him up to learn flexibility, to learn patience, to learn collaboration, reciprocity, all that stuff. So it can happen. My middle son, who has done a couple of videos you might have seen, that's Aiden. He had severe sensory issues, a significant language delay. He needed a buttload of speech therapy in school to get him where he is. He still has some difficulty speaking. He's still very shy, but he has so much brilliance in his head, so much to say. He draws, he writes, He's starting to get more active on Facebook. He can be a lot more social. He can manage his sensory experiences. Some of them are not as big a deal as they once were, not as intense. And this was also a kid who would absolutely fall apart if you told him no. Not only would he fall apart and start sobbing, but he would cuss you out using words that don't even come out of your own mouth. So much so that it was shocking, okay? And Aiden probably gave me some of my best strategies in terms of change in behavior around fast. And it was all because I wanted to see them succeed. I didn't want to educate the world about why they should let it slide. Why they should just allow my child to be ineffective. It's not to say that I didn't you know, ask for that ever, but I would tell them, we're working on it. Be patient, it's harder for him than you realize but I'm working hard to get in there. Please support us. Instead of quickly saying, oh, this is a bad child. Oh, you just need to spank him more often. That's not how it works. So I just wanted to put this out there. Because as a parent, you have simply got to be prepared to play big. You can't slack off. You know, I'm not saying you got to be a martyr or burn yourself out. I'm saying you've got to have bigger ideas in terms of who you can be and what you can facilitate for your child. And you've got to think bigger in terms of what they're capable of so they can meet the world head on and change it. Be effective. Be fully who they are. So thank you all of you beautiful people for joining me today. Sarah, Phoebe, Paul, Joy, I really appreciate it. And I really want you to think about what I've put out there today. And more importantly, I want to hear your opinions. Disagree with me if you want to. See, Brian, you're full of shit. Okay. There are a lot of different ways to parent in this world. You can see it by all the different people that are out there and how some of them turned out. And some of it you can track back to their parenting. Parents are not completely off the hook in terms of how their kids play out. You know, I hear a lot of this. Well, you know, it's not because of bad parenting. Well, it could be because of inconsistent parenting. You know... Some of those statements are real big misnomers. Parenting has a huge impact on how your kids turn out. Okay, It's important to know that. So with that, I'm going to let you go for now. I think I've you know, kind of got my steam out there. Thank you again for joining. I, I really adore you. I appreciate you giving me your time. This has been Brian. We'll talk again soon.